Good morning. My name is Han Bu Nghiem, and I'm a professor of radiology at Oakland University William Beaumont School of Medicine. Today I'm going to talk about correlative imaging of gallbladder cancer, how to differentiate from acute cholecystitis. Gallbladder cancer is an uncommon but highly fatal malignancy with fewer than 5,000 new cases diagnosed each year in the United States. It is three to four times more common in women than men and typically seen in older patients, 65 years or older with long-standing cholelithiasis. The overall poor prognosis of gallbladder cancer is related to the often advanced stage at diagnosis with a five-year survival rate of 2 to 8 percent and a median survival of less than six months. Early diagnosis can improve the clinical outcome and cure rate with the long-term survival rates ranging from 85 to 100 percent for T1 stage disease where the cancer has not yet spread beyond the gallbladder. Unfortunately, fewer than 10% of symptomatic patients and only about one of five patients with incidentally diagnosed gallbladder cancer have early stage disease. The early spread of gallbladder cancer is attributed to the absence of a submucosal layer in the wall, which promote early and direct invasion of the cancer to the adjacent hepatic parenchyma, also to the biliary tree the cancer spreads to the liver mainly by direct invasion and also along the portal tract to involve the biliary tree, along the hepatoduodenal ligament to involve the lymph nodes and vascular channel, and then peritoneal cavity and then distant metastasis. At histology, 90% of gallbladder cancer are adenocarcinoma. The main risk factors of gallbladder cancer is gallstones, especially untreated chronic symptomatic gallstones. Other risk factors include chronic cholecystitis, porcelain gallbladder, gallbladder polyps, congenital biliary cyst, and anomalous pancreatic biliary junction. The diagnosis of gallbladder cancer is usually unsuspected. It may be diagnosed incidentally on imaging, intraoperatively at cholecystectomy, but the more common scenario is that found incidentally by histopathology after cholecystectomy for gallstones or cholecystitis with a reported rate of up to 3% of patients undergoing cholecystectomy. On cross-sectional imaging, gallbladder cancer can present as one of the three imaging patterns corresponding to microscopic examination. The most common pattern is that of a soft tissue mass replacing the gallbladder and invading the liver as seen in this cut section of macro gross pathology here, gallbladder infiltrating, replacing the a cancer replacing the gallbladder with direct invasion into the adjacent liver parenchyma. In this section, there are also hepatic metastasis and lymph node metastasis. The second most common presentation is that of focal or diffuse gallbladder wall thickening, as well as asymmetric wall thickening, as seen on this growth photograph here. Gallstones are commonly seen with the gallbladder cancer, and here shows focal irregular thickening of the gallbladder wall where the tumor has infiltrated. The third pattern is that of an intraluminal polypoint mass. So let's take a look at the ultrasound imaging features of gallbladder cancer. First, the first pattern gallbladder cancer presenting as a soft tissue mass replacing the gallbladder. When the cancer has totally replaced the gallbladder on ultrasound, we see non-visualization of the gallbladder with the presence of gallstones within the mast, and this is usually most diagnostic. 
Otherwise, we see a heterogeneous, predominantly hypochoic mass with irregular margin and with associated shadowing echogenic foci related to coexisting gallstones or gallbladder wall calcification or tumoral calcification. Evidence of hepatic, biliary, and nodal invasion sealed the diagnosis. Color Doppler sonography is helpful in differentiating tumor factor sludge from mass, but CT and MR imaging are better at confirming a mass when ultrasound is non-conclusive, and they are better at detecting adjacent organ invasion, nodal metastasis, and distant metastasis. So let's take a look at a few cases. Here's an 87-year-old female presenting with abdominal pain. Previous ultrasound studies show a normal gallbladder. On the current exam within the normal within the gallbladder fossa, we don't see the gallbladder, but we do see a heterogeneous, predominantly hypochoic mass with multiple focal areas of shadowy echogenic foci, likely related to gallstones within the gallbladder. This image alone should be highly suspicious for advanced stage of gallbladder cancer. Looking closely, there is no definition or lack of definition between the gallbladder margin and the hepatic parenchyma. Again, highly suspicious for direct liver invasion from gallbladder cancer. Then one look for evidence of metastatic disease. The liver contains focal hepatic lesions the combination of sonographic findings highly favor advanced stage gallbladder cancer. Here is the same patient with correlative CT imaging that show heterogeneous enhancing gallbladder mass, replacing the gallbladder, presence of gallstones. There's direct invasion of the cancer into the liver parenchyma and multiple liver metastasis. CT and MR are better at detecting nodal metastasis as in this case here, in this patient with uh, lymph node metastasis. Another older female representing with right upper quadrant pain. Here's the gallbladder, which is filled with soft tissue mass, gallstones. The evaluation for direct liver invasion is limited on this ultrasound study. Looking for evidence of metastatic disease, we see multiple small hepatic lesions. Again, the findings are most worrisome for gallbladder cancer with liver metastasis. Here's the correlative CT imaging that show gallbladder mass, gallstones, direct liver invasion, and multiple liver metastasis of this advanced stage gallbladder cancer. How about this case? This patient presents with pain again, older patient. The gallbladder has multiple gallstones. There is soft tissue within the gallbladder. Uh, is this sludge, debris, or is that mass? Color Doppler sonography is the key here. That shows the neovascularity of the lesion within the gallbladder lumen indicative of gallbladder cancer. Another patient presenting with pain, the gallbladder show presence of a mass that is um, significant peripancreatic lymphadenopathy and color flow Doppler again show evidence of vascularity within the soft tissue lesion within the gallbladder, highly consistent with gallbladder carcinoma. Here's a correlative MR study that show bulky peripancreatic lymphadenopathy compressing the portovenous confluence, a intermediate to high signal intensity mass within the gallbladder lumen on these T2-weighted images that show significant persistent enhancement on the post-contrast images with evidence of direct invasion into the liver parenchyma. So again, CT and MR and MR are better for the evaluation of adjacent organ invasion, biliary invasion, and lymph nodes metastasis. 
The second imaging pattern of gallbladder cancer is that of an intraluminal polypoid mass. On ultrasound, we look for a non-mobile intraluminal polypoid mass to differentiate from mobile tumorphactive sludge, but at times it can be difficult to distinguish from non-shadowing adherent stone or sludge. Color flow Doppler is helpful, but in case where the diagnosis is not clear, CT and MR should be uh, very helpful in confirmation of a mass. The differential diagnosis for a intraluminal gallbladder mass include not only cancer, but adenomatous and cholesterol polyps, the uncommon carcinoid tumor or metastatic disease such as from melanoma. So as I mentioned, color flow Doppler is extremely helpful, but there are features of a polypoid lesion that will help us raise the index of suspicions for malignancy. And these are the features that are highly associated with malignancy that we should be aware of. When the polypoid lesion is greater than 10 millimeter, there's high prevalence of malignancy which has been reported anywhere between 37 to 88%. Key feature, the polypoid lesion is associated with thickening or nodularity of the gallbladder wall. The lesion, if it's sessile or broad pay base, or it has cauliflower feature is also highly suspicious. And obviously, if one sees evidence of hepatic invasion and or lymphadenopathy, that again also favors gallbladder malignancy. So let's take a look at a few cases. Here's a 77-year-old patient on an outside renal stone non-contrast enhanced CT show a two centimeter gallbladder mass. An ultrasound was performed that beautifully demonstrate a polypoid lesion. Color flow, sonog Doppler sonography show the evidence of vascularity. Note the wall of the gallbladder. Gallbladder cancer will not uh, be associated with an intact wall. The wall is usually violated, and there is focal thickening of the gallbladder wall here associated with this polypoid lesion, which turned out to be an early gallbladder cancer cancer for this the patient who is very fortunate to have an early stage gallbladder cancer. Here is another case, a patient who presents with weight loss and decreased appetite. In contrast, enhanced CT scan show a small 8 millimeter polypoid lesion within the gallbladder lumen. An ultrasound was performed confirming this 10 millimeter lesion within the lumen of the gallbladder. Note the irregularity, nodularity, focal thickening of the gallbladder wall, which is, uh, we should be suspicious that it's not just a simple polyp, but there is increased risk of malignancy. The patient had a cholecystectomy, and indeed there was chronic cholecystitis and an invasive adenocarcinoma of the gallbladder. This is a beautiful case uh, given by uh, Dr. Samaka that show this small polypoid lesion on this T2 weighted images that has this very irregular feature. Contrast and hence CT look for the subtle irregularity and focal thickening and nodularity that is associated with this very small polypoid lesion, the subtle features are very helpful for us to raise our suspicion that this polyp may be a malignant polyp, which indeed this turned out to be. In contrast to this benign polyp, here we see a small polyp. It doesn't have the set side broad base appearance. Note the intact gallbladder wall, smooth intact. Here's a gross specimen on the stock, MR imaging shows smooth associated wall. Uh, there's no focal nodularity or thickening of this benign gallbladder problem. 
So let's take a look at this case. Here's a patient coming in with right upper quadrant pain. It was reported there is a um, heterogeneous echogenic material within the gallbladder lumen that has some what of an irregular surface here. Color flow showed no obvious vascularity. So it was interpreted as possible sludge, even though it was not mobile. Uh, there was no sonographic Murphy's sign. The liver function test was normal. And the patient was recommended to have a follow-up ultrasound. The patient uh, came back to the ER one week later with severe pain. And uh, the surgeon took the patient to the OR to do a cholecystectomy. And at PATH, there was a 3.7 centimeter primary gallbladder cancer. Let's take a look at the image again. Here is the gallbladder wall. It is focally thickened. The gallbladder wall is not intact here. And when we see mast-like structure within the gallbladder lumen, even though color flow Doppler did not show any vascularity, we should be suspicious and take prudence and uh, recommend the appropriate further imaging with contrast enhanced MR to exclude the presence of a mass. And uh, that's what um, should have been done in this case. But fortunately, the patient did have surgery that uh, diagnosed uh, early gallbladder cancer. The third imaging pattern of gallbladder cancer is that of diffuse or focal wall thickening. This is the most diagnostic challenging pattern of the three because it mimics the appearance of the more common acute and chronic inflammatory conditions of the gallbladder and other non-gallbladder benign conditions. In these cases, we really need to look for the subtle findings that may suggest malignancy in conjunction with the clinical presentation that will help us determine the cause of the process. Here's a list of differential diagnosis for diffuse gallbladder wall thickening, including non-fasting state, acute and chronic cholecystitis, liver disease, low albumin, renal cardiac disease, ACE, and gallbladder malignancy. And uh, here's the list for differential diagnosis of focal gallbladder wall thickening, including cancer, polyps, metastasis, and adenomyomatosis. So what are the characteristics that are suggestive of malignancy in these cases? Again, as we emphasize, look for asymmetric irregular wall thickening. Obviously, other associated findings, including invasion of liver, hepatic metastasis, lymphadenopathy, lymph biliary obstruction, all will favor the suspicions of malignancy. So let's take a look at a few cases here. This is a 58-year-old patient with right upper quadrant pain. Note the gallbladder wall thickening in the fundus, irregular asymmetric. Gallbladder cancer occurs in the fundal region in about 60% of cases. 30% are in the body and 10% occur in the neck. So pay very special attention to the gallbladder fundus. Color flow Doppler sonography show vascularity of this irregular focal thickening. Looking for evidence of metastasis show multiple hepatic lesion, biliary obstruction, Again, the combination of findings should lead us to the appropriate diagnosis of gallbladder cancer. Here is the MR uh, exam of that patient show diffuse thickening of the gallbladder wall, which is enhancing, but look at the irregular asymmetric thickening of the gallbladder wall, in addition to presence of multiple liver metastasis of this patient with advanced stage of gallbladder carcinoma. Here's a case on CT again to emphasize the irregular nodular asymmetric thickening of the gallbladder. 
gallstones, biliary dilatation, and evidence of lymphadenopathy. Again, the combination of findings are highly suspicious for metastatic gallbladder cancer. Here's a patient with biliary invasion from a gallbladder mass seen as focal thickening in the region of the fundus. The tumor has spread along the hepatoduodenal ligament that uh, cause uh, compression and invasion of the biliary tree and bulky peripancreatic lymphadenopathy. So this is a case of, again, an advanced stage gallbladder cancer with nodal and biliary invasion. Here is a case um, courtesy of Dr. Samelka that shows beautiful evidence of persistent thickened enhancement um, of the thickened gallbladder wall. Look at the irregularity, asymmetric on the diffuse thickening with irregularity of the wall with evidence of adjacent liver invasion, multiple liver metastasis, in addition to vascular metastasis as evidenced by occlusion of the portal vein in this patient with uh, gallbladder cancer with hepatic invasion and vascular invasion. Here's an interesting case, 80-year-old patient which, uh, who presented with weakness and confusion, non-contrast CT show a gallbladder with probable gallbladder wall thickening and maybe tiny gallstone. A ultrasound was obtained that showed this interesting layered appearance of the gallbladder wall, which is thickened. There is no pericholecystic fluid. There's a tiny little gallstone. Color Doppler sonography show vascularity of the gallbladder wall here. Although there was negative sonographic Murphy's sign, the imaging um, findings are suggestive of cholecystitis. A HIDA scan was suggested and it was negative and an MRI was performed. On MR imaging, T2-weighted images showed the more typical gallbladder wall thickening of cholecystitis with a double-layered pattern and an inner hypo-intense T2 layer of mucosa and the muscle layer and the outer hyper-intense layer of stromal edema um, of, uh, suggestive of acute cholecystitis. On the contrast-enhanced study, there is smooth enhancement of the mucosa with delay enhancement of the gallbladder wall. Again, the findings are more suggestive or more consistent with uh, cholecystitis. The patient was uh, taken to the OR for cholecystectomy, and the path show diffuse large B-cell lymphoma of the gallbladder, a primary gallbladder lymphoma, a very um, more, more uncommon gallbladder malignancy. So let's turn our attention to acute cholecystitis and how we differentiate from gallbladder cancer. In 90% of cases, acute cholecystitis is caused by in, an impacted stone in the gallbladder neck or the cystic neck or the cystic duct. So it is imperative that we look for this impacted stone in the gallbladder neck or the cystic duct. In the remaining cases, the cholecystitis is due to acute acanthalous cholecystitis, which is usually seen in critically ill or injured patients. The primary ultrasound findings of acute cholecystitis was reported by Raw et al., which include the combination of gallstones and a positive sonographic Murphy's sign. This combination of ultrasound finding has a 92% positive predictive value for acute cholecystitis. As I mentioned, since it's most likely due to a stone impacting the cystic duct and the gallbladder neck, if we see uh, an impacted stone, the diagnosis of acute cholecystitis is easy. Gallbladder wall thickening is a secondary, one of the secondary ultrasound findings of acute cholecystitis. 
The other associated secondary findings are also very useful, including pericholecystic fluid, gallbladder distension, and hypervascularity of the wall of the gallbladder, even though it is a later sign. So here is a typical case of acute cholecystitis. Patient with positive sonographic Murphy sign. In this case, we have a non-mobile non stone impacting the neck of the gallbladder. There is diffuse gallbladder wall thickening, but it is smooth. There is also pericholecystic fluid. In this clinical presentation, this is acute cholecystitis. This patient also presents with right upper quadrant pain. We see a stone impacting the gallbladder neck. Positive sonographic Murphy sign, even though without gallbladder wall thickening, this is consistent with acute cholecystitis. The patient has an MR the next day, and there is marked change. Here we see the gallbladder is now more distended. There is a stone impacting the neck of the gallbladder. There is double layered gallbladder wall, hypo intense inner, hypo intense outer, and there's smooth enhancement of the gallbladder wall. So these findings are consistent with acute cholecystitis. There's no feature that is suggestive, at least by imaging, of gallbladder cancer here. How about this case, the patient with pain? The gallbladder is abnormal. We do have stones. We do have a non-mobile stone in the region of the neck, suspicious for impaction of the neck of the gallbladder. There is a thickening but very irregular gallbladder wall. There's soft tissue material within the gallbladder lumen. Is that sludge or is that a mass? Color Doppler sonography did not show uh, evidence of hypervascularity. An MR was performed to find the disease further. Here we see the typical double-layered gallbladder wall edema, more consistent with an inflammatory process, gallstones. And contrast-enhanced studies show this intense hyperemic changes within the hip adjacent hepatic parenchyma, very helpful sign of acute inflammation. And also these little septi within the lumen of the gallbladder representing slough mucosa of acute complicated gangrenous cholecystitis. Looking at the gallbladder again, I would also be suspicious for this linear membrane within the gallbladder lumen raising the suspicions for acute gangrenous cholecystitis. So in this case of complicated cholecystitis, Sometimes it is difficult to differentiate from gallbladder carcinoma, but with appropriate further imaging um, exam, we should be able to differentiate between gallbladder cancer and complicated cholecystitis. How about this case, the patient with uh, metastatic colon cancer who is on chemotherapy is rather sick the patient has abdominal pain, an ultrasound was obtained that show gallbladder wall thickening, echogenic material within the gallbladder lumen that is not vascular, probably sludge. In the appropriate clinical setting, we should be concerned about acalculus cholecystitis, especially when early exams show normal gallbladder wall. Here we have progressive thickening of the gallbladder wall in the absence of ascites, congestive heart failure. One should raise suspicions for acalculus cholecystitis. HIDA scan was performed. HIDA scan can be helpful in acalculus cholecystitis because the uh, bile can be very viscous and the sludge can also be very thick and viscous and can obstruct the cystic duct. So again, um, a countless cholecystitis, be aware of the progressive gallbladder wall thickening without presence of other uh, causative factors. 
If the patient start out with gallbladder wall thickening and we are suspicious of a calculus cholecystitis, MRI is also very helpful. Again, this case is courtesy of Dr. Samelka. We see in this patient gallbladder luminal distension, this beautiful T2-weighted double-layered gallbladder wall edema, smooth sludge. Contrast and hand study early show the adjacent hyperemic vascularity of the liver parenchyma adjacent to the gallbladder, very helpful sign for acute inflammation. And here we see smooth mucosal wall enhancement of this uh, gallbladder, which uh, is uh, consistent with the uh, acalculus cholecystitis. Let's move on to adenomyomatosis. We also need to be aware of the findings on this entity because it can mimic gallbladder cancer. It is a common non-inflammatory condition with epithelial proliferation, muscular hypertrophy, and intramural diverticular orokitansky ashoff sinuses. The disease process can be focal, segmental, or diffuse. On ultrasound, one look for evidence of intramural cysts with the echogenic foci with V-shaped or comatale artifacts that are hallmarks of adenomyos, adenomyomatosis on ultrasound. Color flow Doppler is also helpful that show the twinkle artifacts due to the irregularity of the crystals within the rokitansky ashoff sinuses. MRI is also very specific. The intramural cysts are seen as a string of bead or pearl necklace sign. So here's the patient with the typical findings of adenomyomatosis on ultrasound. This echogenic foci with V-shaped or comatale artifacts that are very unique for, a cluster, for adenomyomatosis due to the cholesterol crystals within the lumina of the Rokitansky ash of sinuses. Here is a patient of focal thickening in the fundus with some cystic changes. Color flow Doppler sonography show this twinkle artifact due to the cholesterol crystals within these sinuses. Again, a finding of adenomyomatosis of the gallbladder. Here's MRI demonstrating the nice uh, string of bead sign or pearl necklace sign due to the intramural cysts within this focal wall thickening in the fundus of the gallbladder, the hallmark of endomyomatosis on MR with very high specificity, 92% specificity for the diagnosis of adenomyomatosis. On CT, endomyomatosis may be difficult in this case, is seen as a focal thickening and or mass in the region of the fundus. MRI was appropriately uh, performed that show this typical pearl necklace or string of beads signed on this heavily T2-weighted image that is the hallmark of adenomyomatosis. And lastly, and we should talk about xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis, although it's uncommon um, variant of chronic cholecystitis, characterized by lipid-laden inflammatory process, comparable to xanthogranulomatous, xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis. On imaging finding, we see marked gallbladder wall thickening with intramural nodules that are consistent with intramural abscesses or these foci of granulomatous inflammation. Without the associated features suggestive of gallbladder cancer such as liver invasion, bile duct invasion, or nodal metastasis, the distinction between these two entities often are impossible preoperatively. Here's the beautiful case of xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis as a courtesy again of Dr. from Dr. Samelka that show significant marked gallbladder wall thickening with multiple intramural abscesses or nodules of the xanthogranuloma 
that is consistent with xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis. Again, in this case, the preoperative differentiation between this entity and gallbladder cancer may be difficult uh, without the associated um, metastatic findings of gallbladder cancer. So in conclusion, gallbladder cancer is a lethal cancer typically diagnosed incidentally for routine cholecystectomy or by imaging. It's often diagnosed at advanced stage with very poor survival rates. But early diagnosis of gallbladder cancer can improve clinical outcome and cure rate. And imaging may allow earlier diagnosis, but there may be significant overlaps between gallbladder cancer and benign disease of the gallbladder. So our challenging, our challenging tasks are one, to identify and to differentiate between the benign lesions and early gallbladder cancer, which requires prudence and appropriate imaging techniques and familiarity with these subtle differentiating features so that we can diagnose early gallbladder cancer, which uh, can improve the outcome for the patients. Our task also includes to accurately assess extent or stage the disease which is vital in the treatment planning and prognostication. And as we have seen, our task is to emphasize the complementary roles of ultrasound, CT, and MRI Im imaging for better evaluation of both benign and malignant gallbladder diseases. Thank you very much for your attention.